During the Umayyad Khalifat age of Islam in the early 8th century CE, geographic expansion of the dynasty was at its highest of heights. To succeed with such challenging conquests, a demand on exceptional leadership composed of many great experienced generals, as well as a promising group of young and charismatic commanders, was vital. One of these young commanders was Kulthum bin al Agar, who was on the rise, gaining the admiration, respect and trust not only of the Khalifa at the time, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, but also critically with the general Umayyad military establishment. Such sentiments were accredited to his renowned intelligence, humane decency, deep acumen and sharp instincts. As a consequence of Kutum's success, there was intense hatred and hostility felt towards him by the elder generals, who themselves had been the entrusted members of the Khalifa's council. One specific general, Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, had a great personal dislike for Kuthum and felt threatened by his ascent. Al-Hajjaj's relationship with Kuthum was one of covert hostility, very deep within his soul. Al-Hajjaj, an intelligent man himself, had strategized over and over and was resolved to the fact that he had a single option. He needed to break the trust between the Khalifa and Kulthum. Scheming for months, Al-Hajjaj managed to concoct and build up a plausible story of treason that was difficult to challenge by any who it accused. And being an internal military affair, there was no chance for the victim, Kulthum, to defend himself. Al-Hajjaj opportunistically became judge and jury, and death by the sword was the sentence. Kulthum was immediately arrested to carry out the execution, and upon his mother, a woman exceeding a century in age, learned of the news, she hurriedly ran to the palace to beg for her son's release, or at the very least, mercy, from the Khalifa Abdul Malik. Being allowed an audience with the Khalifa, she cries for her son's pardon. The Khalifa, recognizing the plight of the elder woman, feels sympathy and his affections for Kulthum ever strong. But what could he do? Her son was a traitor in the eyes of the law, Contemplating his options, the Khalifa comes up with a potentially life-saving proposition that would exonerate the Khalifa of any blame or bias. He explains to Umm Kulthum his decision. In Islam, our lives are written and preordained by Allah. And so, the written word shall be the judge of Kulthum's fate. Two pieces of paper will be marked with the words life and death. If Kulthum chooses the paper with life, then he is innocent and shall live. But if he chooses the paper with death, then his fate is sealed, and all the accusations against him are confirmed, and he shall be buried as the traitor he is. Umm Kulthum returns home and soon word comes out from the palace that Al-Hajjaj was to be the person responsible for conducting the trial by paper. Her heart breaks yet again. Her son's execution was now an unquestionable outcome. Saddened by her certainty of Al-Hajjaj's wickedness and of his hatred towards her son, she decided to visit Kulthum at the dungeon and wait with her poor son before his final judgment day. When foreseeing him, she witnesses a lively smile on his face. Kulthum was very happy to see his mother, yet for her, this was an extremely sad occasion, virtually a final meeting with her son. What is wrong, mother? says Kulthum. What is wrong? she replies. What is wrong is this world. They're taking you away from me and there's nothing we can do. We are prisoner to Al-Hajjaj's cruelty, and he will for sure end your life. Kulthum smiles to his mother again and says, There's nothing to worry about, mother. I will not be executed. I promise you that. Kulthum, in his examination of his predicament, thought to himself that he knew that Al-Hajjaj would leave nothing to chance. He was aware that by Al-Hajjaj writing the word death on both papers, regardless of which Kulthum would pick, there was no escape from the executioner's sword. But that is where Kulthum found opportunity in his dilemma. On the appointed day of Kulthum's trial, and in front of the Khalifa, and a massive public crowd, all await to see and hear the impending verdict. Al-Hajjaj, as expected, had written death on both papers, and folded them, concealing their judgments. Kulthum, smiling cunningly, and with all confidence, takes one of the two papers. But surprisingly, does not reveal his sentence as expected, but rather quickly swallows the piece of paper whole. The whole scene is quiet with anxiety. The Khalifa, shocked at what has just taken place, commands Al-Hajjaj to hand over the remaining piece of paper to him. 
As the Khalifa unfolds the paper, the word death is revealed. Relieved, the Khalifa announces proudly to the audience that the paper that Kulthum had chosen was that of life. The whole crowd erupts in celebration. <laughs>